What's up guys, Lex here back at the loft once again. Thankful to be here and a special thanks to all the new subscribers. Now today I just want to get into some of the custom settings that I have for both shooting and video and for photo. I'm going to start off with some brief settings for anyone that already knows their camera and has the custom function button set up the way that they like. They just want to know uh, how I shoot and what profiles that I shoot in. So the first would be custom mode one, which is set to video mode. I have this set to shoot in vlog. This is mainly because when shooting client work or when shooting short films, I want the maximum dynamic range and the most color information that I can add when editing in post. Now the record quality is set to shoot in 4K at 24 frames per second, interchangeably switching between 24 and 60 in 10-bit color 422. The file format is always set to MOV. I never shoot in MP4. I feel like MOV is the best quality, and if I'm not mistaken, it is the best quality, better than uh, MP4. Now, for the part that everybody wants to know, it seems to be one of the biggest, you know, debates when shooting with Panasonic uh, Lumix cameras, and that's the autofocus and the autofocus settings. We're shooting in autofocus now. I've shot in autofocus for all the videos that I have, as far as my Talking Heads videos goes, and occasionally. Uh, for one or two music videos, I've used these same autofocus settings and they never change. Now going into the menu, my AF custom settings are as follows. My AF speed is set to negative one and my sensitivity is set to zero. I found that these are the best for me. I know some people say negative one, negative three, or zero, zero, or negative one and plus three. But for me, AF speed at negative one and sensitivity set to zero seem to just work perfectly fine for me. I've shot all my talking head videos with these settings. I've shot two music videos with these settings and it just works great. Now this is shooting with the Sigma 28 to 70 f 2.8 lens. And this isn't even a native lens. So I can only imagine what it would be uh, with a native lens. Now, whatever lens that you are shooting with, try these settings. If they work for you, great. If they don't, just continue to tweak and find which work for the focal length that you're shooting in and for the lens that you're shooting in. Also, I found when shooting in AFC mode, switching to human detect, when you click down the joystick button on the back of the camera next to the AF button, uh, it gives these little points or lines on each quadrant of the box. And it seems to track better and it seems to lock on focus better. We're using it right now. I use it for all my talking head stuff, music videos that I shoot. So, you know, I would also suggest you try that. Uh, I found that tip from, I don't want to mess his name up, but um, yeah. Just try it. <laughs> now switching over to custom mode C2, it's the same quality settings as custom mode C1. The only difference is we're not shooting in V-Log. I shoot in the natural picture profile. I've made some tweaks to this profile that best suit me. I feel like shooting in this mode gives me a quick and easy color grading experience uh, when I want something with a fast turnaround time or just for something that looks good straight out of camera. I have the contrast set to negative five, saturation set to negative one, hue set to negative one, sharpness set to negative one, and noise reduction set to negative one. I tried many different picture profiles, but this just seems to work the best with these settings, and it just comes out looking amazing every single time with barely any work. Now getting into more in depth into the camera, um, people that are more visual learners um, we're gonna get into that right now so uh, if you want to take out your camera and follow along let's get straight into it now on the control dial that we have set up to ISO you want to click on the top and hold now this will take you to a bunch of different menu functions I have the top set to record quality so when I click up record quality comes on and I can choose between different frame rates between 24, 30, and 60, and 8-bit or 10-bit, or Cinema 4K or regular 4K or HD. But I have mine set to 4K, 24, 10-bit, 422. Hold left. I had this left button function set to sound record level adjustment. That way, when I click the left, I could change that instead of having to go into the menu. Hold down on the right. I have this set to luminance spot meter. Now, I feel like this is great when trying to expose properly for your subject. It'll let you know if you're over or underexposed. Uh, so this really comes in handy, but once again, this is just a preference. Now hold down. This takes you into the menu. I have this set to view assist for vlog. Uh, this helps me to expose for my subject and also see the color. 
at the same time. The hook button at the bottom, I have set to histogram. I don't always use it in video mode, but that's just there for the reassurance that I know I have the histogram function there. Now going over to the Q button, instead of the Q menu, if you hold that down, I have it set to waveform monitor. I feel like this is very important when shooting video, when trying to expose for your image. That way you just hit that button and you know you want to get your waveform kind of in the middle. That way your image is properly exposed and you have a lot of room to play with and nothing is clipping. It'll let you know what's clipping and what isn't. Now going forward, I have the LVF button in the top left set to the level meter. Now all my buttons at the top, the white balance, the ISO, and the exposure compensation, they're all still set to the default. Um, I didn't change none of those. Now the button on the front of the camera body, when you click that, I have it set to image stabilizer. Now when you set up your camera in the menu for video mode and you set up your custom function buttons for video mode, you wanna go back into the menu and save to custom mode. Now I have my first custom mode C1 saved to VLOD 4K 10 bit. Now when setting up the camera in custom mode C2, I have it set up exactly how I have it in C1. All the same custom functions in the same menu. The only difference is, instead of shooting in VLOG, we're shooting in the natural picture profile. That way, I could just switch the top dial from C1 to C2 and I'm good to go. Now the only thing that may change between these custom modes is the frame rate that I'm shooting in, whether it's 24, 30, or 60. Now custom mode C3, I have this set to photography mode and that's the mode we're gonna get into now. Now when shooting photography, I like to shoot in manual mode and the picture profile and camera that I like to use is standard. The camera is set up a little bit different than video mode, so let's get into that. First thing you wanna do when going into photo mode is change your photo style to standard. Now I customize this a little bit. I have my contrast set to negative 0.5, highlight set to zero, shadow set to zero, saturation set to negative 0.5, and my hue set to negative 0.5, sharpness at negative one, and noise reduction at negative one. Metering mode set to default. Aspect ratio, I like to shoot in three by two. Picture quality, I like to shoot both JPEG and RAW. That way the JPEG comes out crystal, and I have the raw file if I wanna go in and edit some more. Picture size set to L. HLG photo mode set to off and high resolution mode is off. And long exposure noise reduction set to on. And yet in compensation is set to on. My focus peaking is on. Now I have this set once again to plus two and the color yellow. Now getting into the custom functions of photo mode. Now first up, if you hold down the LVF button in the top left hand corner, I have it to the monitor switch. This helps when trying to switch between this monitor and this monitor. Going forward, my Q menu button is set to photo grid line. Now I usually have this on at all times, but uh, when handing my camera to someone else, this may throw them off when trying to get the shot. The little hook at the bottom, I have this set to the level gauge and then holding the top of the dial, I have this set to bracketing. That way I can go straight to exposure bracketing, holding down left, I chose high resolution mode, hold down right, I chose silent mode, say if I'm in a situation where it's really quiet and I don't want people to notice I'm taking pictures, I just go to silent mode, hit on, and I'm good to go. Click down, it'll take you into the menu, I chose drive mode and self timer, and there you have it. Those are my settings when shooting in both video and photo mode and switching between the two. I hope I was able to help you guys out, help you customize your camera, and help you gain ease of use. Once again, thank you for watching. Subscribe, comment if you like, and we'll see you again in the next one.